Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on Try Hack Me. Today we're going to be taking a look at task 20, exploitation of the Git server. In the previous task, we had a look through the source code of the exploit we found, identified the lines which needed to be updated, and then made the necessary changes. Now it's time to run the exploit. So we can go ahead and do this with uh, just forward slash and then the exploit. And there we go. Really snappy. Uh, oh boy, that's not good. Uh, that git stack server is running as NT, an NT authority slash system. Uh, so we just rooted that box. That's a uh, big no bueno. Success. Not only did the exploit work perfectly, it gave us the uh, command execution as NT authority slash system, the highest ranking local account on a Windows target. From here, we want to obtain a full reverse shell. We have two options for this. We could change the command in the exploit to rerun the code, or we could use our knowledge of the script to leverage the same web shell to execute more commands for us without performing the same exploit twice. Option, or option number two is a lot quieter than option number one, so let's go ahead and use this. And this is a lot better. This is a, something that demonstrates that you have more nuance as a pen tester rather than just running the same exploit over and over again. This is messy, and uh, that exploit code is probably flagged, so running it over and over and over again is going to get you caught much faster. The web shell, we have uploaded response to a post request using a, the parameter A by default. This means we have two easy ways to access this. We could use curl from the command line or burp suite for a GUI option. So with curl, we could go ahead and do it this way. So curl dash capital X, uh, specifying the method we're using post HTTP, and then we need the IP 10, 272, and then 150, and then we need web, and then exploit dash dark in my name, or in my case, and then dot PHP dash D for the data that we're sending, and then it's gonna be A, and then equals command. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll try this with the present working directory command. And we can see we got nothing left. Uh, so let's see. Note in this screenshot, git server.thdem has been added to the Etsy host file on the uh, attacking machine mapped to the target IP address. So we can see that um, in this specific case, it's cut off, but it'll show on you guys' screen that uh, we're calling it by this uh, user or this uh, host name rather. Uh, with Burp Suite, we first need uh, to turn on the Burp Proxy. For our, uh, see the Burp Suite room if you need help with this and navigate to the exploit URL. Uh, so we can see that we have this here. Let me go ahead. I'll pull, pull up Burp Suite and we can start using that as this will be even easier. And I do want to demo this for you guys. This might be a little bit small, but we can go ahead and send it uh, via repeater to start seeing our information come back oh and that did not work actually because this is a uh, windows that we're running this on and uh, present working directory pwd will not work um is it should be actually no that should work uh what am i thinking here let's go ahead and <laughs> dive past it um i believe that technically should be dir uh but pwd should still return something for what i wanted to do I'm just being silly. Uh, so let's go ahead. We need to go to this. Uh, I'm going to turn on, let's see, options and add a new proxy. This one's going to be burp suite. So 127.0.0.1. This is probably a little bit small. And it should be, I think, 8080 by default. Um, this is not a SOX proxy. Uh, so that should work. And we should be able to just specify that we're going to use that and then go to 10, 200, 72, 150 forward slash git stack. And we can see that we've got that proxy through here. So it is working. There we go. So we can see that the target website has loaded and it's web exploit dash dark dot PHP. So it looks like, um, let me go ahead and we should be able to see that in the history of what we've already sent. So we'll add this, well, let's send it to repeater. So I just right clicked on that to send it to repeater. And we're gonna make this a post request instead because that's far more interesting and far more useful. So control slash R to send the request to repeater on the top menu. Um, I just right clicked on it in the history. Uh, you can go ahead and add, 
as you've uh, intercepted this with the intercept on with the proxy, you can go ahead and do control slash R and it'll send it to repeater uh, by default, or you can go to actions up here and send it to repeater. Nice and easy. Next, we change the get on line one to post and we add a content type header on line nine. So down here, content dash type uh, to tell the server to accept post parameters. So it's gonna be application and we can see this right below that, oh, right over here, uh, x dash www dash form dash URL encoded. And then finally on line 11, we can add in, it looks like we don't need that connection bit. A equals, and we'll try who am I. So let's go ahead and send that. And we can see that we've got a response here. Let's try that again with PWD. Maybe I didn't need to have quotes and that's probably what did it. Okay, interesting. Um, either way, I'll mess with that in a little bit. I might just be using my smooth brain so send the response and we can see that we uh, repress send and see the response come back in. So with two methods available, pick your favorite and we'll aim for a shell. Bonus question, optional. Uh, using the given code for the exploit we cr uh, used against the web server, so you can adapt this exploit to create a full pseudo shell environment. Um, if you wanted to, you could just uh, change what it's actually creating in that PHP uh, file um, and do that pretty easily in this way. So if you go to... Uh, not that. I don't need that directory. Uh, USR share web shells PHP. Uh, and then you can see we have a couple different ones here. We have a PHP reverse shell. Um, we have a simple backdoor and so on and so forth. You can grab uh, just the, I think it's the simple backdoor and just make a pseudo web shell environment. Uh, pretty easy out of that. So if you wanted to do that, that is how you would do it. Uh, we'll mark that as complete. I'm going to have to go into it for the sake of this room. However, that's how you would do that pretty easily. Or you can just find your other PHP reverse shell of your choice. First up, let's use some basic enumeration to get uh, to grips with the web shell. What is the host name of this target? Uh, we can go back to burp suite and type in host name. And we can see it is git dash serve. What operating system is the target? Uh, this is Windows. We know that already. And then what user is the server running as? I'm going to do this again because I don't like typing it out. Who am I? And then send. And then we can just copy that. NT authority slash system. Before we go uh, for a reverse shell, we need to establish whether or not this target is allowed to connect to the outside world. A typical way of uh, doing this is by executing the ping command on a compromised server to ping our own IP and using a network interceptor such as Wireshark or TCP dump, etc., to see if the ICMP echo requests make it through. If they do, the network connectivity is established. However, we may need to go back to the drawing board otherwise. Uh, to start up a TCP dump listener, we would use the following command tcp dump dash i ton zero and then we're going to be looking for icmp traffic note if your vpn is not using the ton zero interface and you will need to replace this with the correct interface for your system uh, you can check that with the ip dash a uh, link to see all the interface or er, interfaces available um, and we'll do that real quick dash a link um, and you can see these are the interfaces that are available typically it's going to be this ton zero and you can see that what that's what i've got here and that's how i'm connected uh, so we can go ahead, uh, I'm going to go to my fifth one here, sudo su cali, um, and we'll do tcp dump dash i ton zero icmp, and we can see that we're listening for that ping traffic. If we go back to our working one here, uh, we can go ahead and do a ping command rather from burp. So we'll pull that up and we'll do ping dash n3 and then our attacking IP which I need to double check because I don't know that off the top of my head there we go so we can grab this let's see if we are routable from this host uh, let's see paste and then uh, let's see what we get and we can go back to our uh, TCP dump 
and it looks like it is not working. Um, I don't believe, there we go. So it looks like we can't ping ourselves. So it looks like we need to, or we're going to need to think outside the box to catch this shell. We have two easy options here. Given we have a fully stable shell on dot 200, we could upload a static copy of Netcat and just catch the shell here, or we could set up a relay on dot 200 to forward a shell back to our listener. It's up to you which option to uh, you choose, although for the sake of practice, a SOCAT relay is suggested. However, whichever way you choose, um, please be mindful of other users at earlier stages uh, of the network to and ensure that any ports you open are above 15,000. And make sure that you name things appropriate or appropriately with your username. Before we can do this, however, we need to take one other thing into account. CentOS uses an always on wrapper around the IP tables firewall called firewall D. By default, this firewall is extremely restrictive, only allowing access to SSH and anything else the sysadmin has specified. Before we can start capturing or relaying shells, we need to open our desired port in the firewall. This can be done with the following command. So I'm going to do this on, uh, let's do port 1600 or 16,000. That'll be nice and easy. I can go back to my third one here. I'm actually going to rename this. Uh, let's see, web server put the name of the tab to specify that this is a shell off of the web server that I have here. And we can go ahead and run that command. So this is one thing that you want to note down uh, during a pen test because this is a potentially destructive change um, and you need to have this cleaned up. So make sure that you note this in your report for this network. Add port uh, and then we want, I'm gonna use 16,000 and then TCP. Uh, you probably wanna use a different port than that because I'm guessing that a lot of people that are watching these videos will probably use all that same port that I'm using. So just be aware of it. Um, I don't wanna have you guys get frustrated because nothing is working and you're thinking, wait a minute, someone else might be using that port. So we can go ahead and uh, run that. Uh, we get success. So that has worked. Uh, substituting your desired or desired choice of port. So I just use 16,000. Uh, in this command, we are using two switches. Uh, first, we set the zone to public, meaning that the rule will apply to every inbound connection to the port. Uh, and we then specify which port we wanted to open. So we spent, they set that public right there and then we're setting our port here at the end, along with the protocol we want to use, which is in this case TCP. With that done, set up a, either a listener or a relay. Uh, but, and then we can go for a reverse shell down here using PowerShell. Let's go ahead. I'm going to use, uh, let's go with Netcat because that's gonna be the easiest. And I think that will be the easiest one for you guys to practice with. Uh, well, they did advise for SoCat up here. Um, Netcat's going to be nice and easy, and it's something that you guys will likely already be used to. I do recommend doing the SoCat method for additional practice. However, um, let me go ahead, and I need to get a Netcat static binary. Uh, we should have those already on, uh, let's see, one uh, LS user or USR share uh, Windows binaries. Let's see what we've got. So we have a Netcat.exe. Um, however, wait a minute. Nope, we're on Linux for the uh, server that we're attacking. So let's see what we have. Probably not Linux binaries. Uh, let's do which netcat um, cp usr bin netcat to here. Uh, we'll see if we can just use our binary that we already have. Um, and then we can go ahead and do a Python 3 m HTB server. We'll go back to the reverse shell that we had on the uh, computer that we've already compromised, the web server, and we'll do a curl and then 10, 50, oh goodness, I don't remember my IP that I have, uh, IPA. <laughs> I should probably write this down. I'm actually gonna do that real quick and you probably want to do the same thing at this point. I have a notepad in front of me to make things easier for recording. Uh, so we'll grab that and then we can go back to our shell so it was 10 50 73 19 and then i want netcat and dash o here and c dash dark and there we go we can see that i've got a netcat binary uh if you wanted to choose this you could probably just copy someone else's binary on the machine if for whatever reason this isn't working uh don't worry about getting frustrated with this because sometimes things might just be 
a little bit uh, difficult or tricky if the network's just misbehaving. Um, however, I do recommend practicing with it. Now we can go ahead and make that executable so we can actually use it though. So netcat-dark, and let's try netcat-dark and dash h, and there we go. So that works. Uh, so the binary that we grabbed off of uh, our machine will be just fine. Note that will probably get you caught though otherwise, uh, just because uh, default netcat binary, um, there are a lot of signatures for that. So just keep that in mind. So dash L V N P. Um, and then I'll just run this in the same um, tab that I was running everything in before, because I think we're probably done on the web server for what we wanted. And I'm going to do this on port 16,000. And there we go. Uh, so I'm going to name this uh, web server. And then it was git stack uh, that we're stacking on top of it. So I just added to the end. Now we can go ahead and go back to Burp Suite and get our reverse shell. So let's see, let me scroll down because that's cut off a little bit for me. Let's go for a reverse shell. We can use a PowerShell reverse shell for this. Uh, take the following shell command and substitute in the IP address or IP of the web server and the port you opened in the uh, .2000 firewall or .200 firewall rather in the previous question um, where it says IP and port in all caps. So let me highlight this, copy, and then I'm going to uh, da, 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 send to repeater. There we go. I'm opening up a new tab so that I still have my original command. Um, and we can see that I have my PowerShell command here. So we have IP here. That is going to be 10, 50, 73, and then 19 for me. Make sure that you have your own host there. And then we need the port, uh, which for me was 16,000. Let's go ahead and actually wait. No, I'm catching this not on my IP. So we aren't doing that. I'm catching it on 200. Let's try that. Maybe. Let's see, hold on. We need to do one more thing with this. As this is a web exploit, we need to you URL encode the shell command. Um, if we are using burp suite, we can do this by pasting the command in as a value for the A parameter and then selecting it um, and then pressing uh, control and U, which we need to do because this will not work uh, because it's not URL encoded. There we go. So we've gone ahead and URL encoded it there. If you were using curl, then there are a variety of options available. However, curl does provide a dash dash uh, data dash URL encode switch. However, it's often easiest to just use a website to encode the shell command and then copy it in with the dash D, the data switch. So we can see that we've got that all ready to go. Let's go ahead and try running it. And there we go. Who am I? And we are NT system authority on the get stack server. So we've gone ahead and compromised that, and that is going to do it for task 20. If you have any questions for this one, I do highly recommend asking them in the Try Hack Me Discord or on the subreddit. I will have those both linked in the video description below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video of task 21, where we do stabilization and port uh, post-exploitation on the Git server. But until then, happy hacking.